you have learned how you can compute the projection of a vector on a subspace. Such a projection is an example of a linear transformation. So this projection is implemented by a matrix. But how can we find this projection matrix? That is what you will learn in this video. You have seen an example already. If you have a transformation from R3 to R3, Tx equals Px, where P is a matrix, then we have seen this matrix P uh, with ones here and here, and otherwise zeros. And now if you compute P times x, you get the vector x1, x2, zero. So what this transformation does, it makes the last component zero, which means that it is basically projecting on the x1, x2 plane. So here we have seen already an example of a projection matrix. But how can we find such a projection matrix in general? if you have given some span of x1 up till xn, where x1 up till xn is some basis. So how can we find Rp in that case? Well, first of all, we are going to build an orthogonal basis. We know how to do that. We use gram schmidt And then we find our v1 up till vn, an orthogonal basis for Rw. Then, the next step, we are going to normalize. That's easy. You just divide all v's by their lengths and you get u1 up to un. So now you have an orthonormal basis for w. Usually the u1 up to un will look ugly because you've normalized them so their lengths, uh, uh, so those lengths are one now. However, the vectors themselves often involve some square roots. Then then. We know the projection formula y hat. So if you want to uh, project uh, y onto uh, w, then you have to use an orthogonal basis or an orthonormal basis. And here we have our projection formula y in v1 divided by v1 in v1 times v1 up to y in vn, vn in vn in, in times vn. Now you can use your uh, orthogonal basis as well, so you use the uh, u1, u2 instead of v1, v2. And the advantage is that you're you get a u1 in u1 over here, but that one drops out because you've normalized. So u1 in u1 is 1. So then our projection formula looks like this. We are only left with y in u1 times u1 up till y in u n until up times u n. And now we're going to rewrite this formula in order to get it in the form y hat equals some matrix times y. So we need several steps for that. What do we do? First of all, you can always rewrite your inner product u in v as u transpose times v as a matrix product. So that's what we do with all, all our inner product. Uh, y in u1 can also be rewritten as u1 transpose times y as a normal matrix product. You do that with all of them until the last one u n transpose times y. And uh, you have to multiply them, of course, by u1 up till u n. Okay, there we are. And then what you see now is that over here you have vector times scalar plus vector times scalar plus vector times scalar plus vector times scalar. So it means that you can write your y hat as a matrix times a vector, as follows. You put all the vectors in a matrix and all the scalars in a vector. Uh, and then you still have your y hat because if you write this out, what this means is this product. If you compute matrix times vector, you get first component times first vector and so on and so on. Going back is easier to see that this indeed holds. Then we're going to take the next step. Uh, you see in the vector y's everywhere, so you can take the y out. Y is coming here. So now you have your y hat equals a matrix with u1 up to un times a matrix with u1 transpose up to un transpose. So you already see that your uh, y hat equals a matrix u times u transpose times y. So you already have an expression for your projection matrix P in terms of a matrix u where you pu put the columns, uh, u, uh, where you put u1 up to un as columns. So there you have your first expression for your pro projection matrix. You can also write it slightly differently using the uh, column row rule to uh, compute this product over here. 
Here you have all kinds of columns times a matrix with all kinds of rows. And you can rewrite this as a sum of matrices where you take first column times first row. So U1, U1 transpose plus U2, U2 transpose, etc. And those are all matrices here times Y. So there are two ways you can write your projection matrix. Either as a sum U1 times U1 transpose plus U2 times U2 transpose and so on. U n times Un transpose, that's one way to write your projection matrix in terms of your Ui. And another way, find your U1 up to Un, put them in a matrix, then you get U, compute your transpose, and then your projection matrix equals U times U transpose. Well, both ways of writing your projection matrix have their advantages, but now we found not only one way to write our projection matrix, but even two ways.